Hi, here's Roland Dan from PSAT Technology, Global Product Manager. And today I want to talk about a topic called TDD measurement for 5G and ARC. And uh, I'm going to use uh, a signal, it's 3.7 gigahertz, this I guess is uh, probably Verizon. And uh, that's the you know signal I can see in my office. First off, I just kind of give you an idea. You can look at the RTSA and you know this is a real-time spectralizer. You can see this signal popping up and go. That, that's the uplink signal. And here's the downlink. You can also change to the spectrogram, give you an idea how the signal goes. And also you can use high marker over here to basically figure out where the SSB or control channel block is. When you find the control channel block, then you can do demodulation, etc. And today I really want to kind of dive into how exactly the SSB looks like or different time slot looks like in the Spectralizer mode. And first of all, let's confirm this signal. It is a 5 R. And we're going to go to OTA, OTA measurement. Uh, you can see I already kind of figure out the signal. So I tapped in 3.73. And uh, this is the SSB center frequency. If you don't know what the center frequency is, or you roughly know, but you want to try to figure it out, the quickest way you can do is you go to a channel mode, you can do a sync roster, and then you tap in, let's see, seven. I just make up the wrong frequency. And either you can see we actually snap into the closest sync channel and I'll tell you the sync channel GSN number, offset number, so that's exactly what it is. Uh, all this measurement, I'm not going to go to each detail, but it, essentially you have top one frequency, style ID, SSB index, it's all zero, that means there's not a whole lot of informing there. Then you have RSI, RSRQ, RSRP, signal to noise ratio, you can see it's pretty bad area, it's uh, kind of literally it's zero dB. One thing I want to kind of pay attention, you see whether you're making good measurement. The first one is frequency error. If you are locked to the space station, you make a right measurement, the frequency error should be very small. You know, in my case, even though I have a pretty low coverage, and I still can get it, you know, in hundreds of hertz, with the 3.7 gigahertz carrier frequency, a few hundred hertz, that's very, very good. Another thing is time offset. This one, you know, is pretty large, thousands of a microsecond. That's not what I'm expecting. The reason is the software reporting hundreds of microsecond because we are not set up the GPS trigger yet. So you can go to trigger, uh, press sweep, trigger setting, trigger, choose periodic trigger. When then you synchronize, you can synchronize with uh, one PPS. Uh, that's the, from GPS. Boom, you can see 66 microseconds. This is a, a very low level signal as you can get a you know, a microsecond of synchronization. That means if you see a very large number, then you may want to question what's going on with your base station. And uh, of course, you can always turn on the other window, so bar chart. That gives you a view. You can look at reference level. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you also can show you there's some other data here. You can we show you all the PCI. You can set up your know, multi beam. You see, hey, I want to turn on the multi beam and see whether I see more than one beam. So only over here, it's not. We we'll only have one. Right? Okay. So that's the over the air demodulation. The next one is will be really interesting. We we'll want to look at the time domain of those time slot as well as want to do a time gating to really look at the spectrum of SSB or uplink spectrum or downlink spectrum. To do that, we're going to switch to Spectralizer. So I already set up the center frequency span. You can put up you know, whatever span appropriate. First thing I'm going to do a zero span. Think about zero span is the scope. So I'm going to change the zero span and I'm going to use under, pick a number, under millisecond. So you can see the signal. This is basically what you see. This is a time domain data. You know, over here is the zero. Here's a hundred millisecond. So you can see uh, their pulse on and off. At this time, you have no idea what are they. So what you do is you can do a trigger, and we set up a one PPS trigger. 
and uh, here's my location. So this is a trigger. You can set a trigger position wherever you want. I set to you know one. So that means that's the trigger position. That's my one PPS block, or my one PPS divided by n, which is an integer number. In this case, because of 20 milliseconds, so that's where our interval start. That's most likely is your SSB location. Of course, over here, you can't really see that much. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to zoom in. Instead of using 100 milliseconds, I'm going to use, let's see, 30 milliseconds. I hope I can see two SSBs. Okay, so now you can see there's the one SSB. It's pretty clear. They're always there. And another is over here. And I can use marker. I'm using marker one. I'm going to do a delta marker. I can put a second delta marker, put another 20 millisecond. And uh, you can see this two exactly consistent. So you know it's on the right SSB. Now I'm going to zoom even further. I'm going to zoom into one millisecond. The beauty is you can see this signal is uh, never changed. So you know it's SSB. I'm going to just take the marker off so don't confuse you. And now I want to measure what's the length of the SSB. And if you want to get a, a better measurement, you can always turn on the average. Oh, sorry. Um, you can turn on the average. For example, you can use the average trace to give you a better you know, uh, idea. So that when you turn on the average, you know this is definitely an SSB. You can see the power level not changing because the SSB power never change. Now we're going to use marker to measure this SSB block, how wider it is. So we can see, oh, it's about, should be about 130-ish, 130, 130. yeah. So according to standard, as a 30 kilohertz, it's about 135. Uh, by standard, of course, we may off a little bit. It's total four symbols, uh, four symbols as, uh, so that I know, okay, that's my SSB. By this time, you know this here, this little arrow, that's your time slot zero. You have a one millisecond sweep, so if division is 100 microseconds, so you can, at the time you can change, for example, you can change to five, uh, five millisecond. So you can start see the other time slot and to see whether they are uplink or downlink power. So it is very convenient, right? So the next one we're going to do is what happened when I want to measure uplink and downlink spectrum. That's where we're going to do is time gating. The time gating only can be done zero span. So we're going to press frequency. I'm going to press zero last span. So that's now go back to where we were. I'm going to turn off. Uh, I don't want to trace average anymore. Just, uh, okay. I'm going to uh, turn off the marker. Just kind of make a screen cleaner. Then you go to trigger setting. I already set up periodic one PPS. This is all always preserved. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the gate view. Why turn on the gate view? You have a two view. See the trigger position still in the middle, and uh, which is good. Right now I didn't turn on the gate. That's very important. The gate is not turned on yet. So I'm going to put a let's see a 10 millisecond. That's where the SSB is. I want to kind of uh, put it into one millisecond. Just kind of give you a view. You see the SSB just like you know, on the zero span. We see it. And you can use the gate delay to move this, uh, the goalpost. That's where you're going to turn on the gate. The gate is not on, so the the, the bottom is still, uh, the top is still random spectrum. So this is the spectrum, this is the time, and the length from here to here is one millisecond. You can change, and uh, we're going to turn on the uh, turn on the gate. I saw any turn on gate. You see the spectrum over here. So that's uh, I set it to span 70 megahertz. Uh, it's kind of easy for calculation because 70 megahertz each division is 7 megahertz. That's roughly the SSB at a you know C band, so you can see the roughly one division. So I don't even have to use marker. I know that is. If you want to measure other time slot, you just put a let's say you put it into 10 milliseconds. Remember here is always your zero because it's a little arrow that's your zero. And now you can just simply move the RPG to up the goalpost and it'll give you different time slot. And you can repeat doing this again, 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 right? Let's see, we change to uh, 30 milliseconds. So that from here, let's see, change to 40. 
to 40 milliseconds. So from here, if I move to over here, then that should have another SSD. So to a roughly 20 millisecond-ish, and I should see another SSD. You should be able to see another SSD from here. So let's go back to one millisecond, and I'm going to put a, my here that's my ssp it's right there so so this is a kind of quick overview of how you make those measurements again so in summary there are four ways to measure c-band signal one are uh, using rtsa we talked about that uh, using rtsa to make measurement the second you can do in demodulation you go to both the air demod and uh, figure out what what is your ssp frequency you can make you can get a cell id you can look at multiple cell id you also can put a multiple carrier frequency over here as well. We can measure up to a carrier frequency. You want to further dive into, you know, different time slot, you know, how they behave. And you can simply using in the SA mode, in the SA mode, you can go to trigger setting. Let's turn the turn this off. You can use zero span to, uh, to basically measure your SSB, SSB frequency, turn on the time dating to make measurement for a particular slot. Yeah, one thing I want to emphasize, I've got to mention about this, when you're in the zero span, just make sure you use a larger RBW so you will see capture more energy than kind of acting like a scope. Because when you switch from uh, open time gate sweep to zero span, you will, this portion, you will forget your RBW is it's not set properly. Just now you said I had that problem. So this is, so you can see clearly, this is your SSB. And again, if you, you want to use time gating, make sure go back to non-zero span, go to sweep, trigger, turn on the gate field, turn on the gating right now. That's just a quick summary. Hope this helps you to troubleshooting C-band, TDD, and R in the field. Thank you.